them come. This is their fate. Boy, boy, boy. He over there smacking. All right. All right. All right. Welcome back. Let me get my bird, man. All right. All right. Welcome back to the House of Wolves podcast. I am your host, Deontay, here with my near and dear friends, Jalen and Josh. Today, we got quite a bit to talk about with the game of the year and the game awards announcing all their nominees. DTA 6 can, you know announced steam deck oled coming out of nowhere call of duty just being launched and our initial takes on that it's a lot to talk about so we're going to get um into it real quick but um unfortunately we got someone that's under the weather um poor josh is uh, under the weather as of now so his voice may sound a little bit different i'm gonna let him speak on that but i'm glad you're here appreciate you joining now before we get started, per usual, Jalen, Josh, tell the people how you been, what you've been up to, what you've been doing, how's life going, what games you've been playing, what have you been up to for the past week? Talk to the people. You got it, Jalen? <laughs> uh, you want me to speak on your behalf, too? Nah, just... <laughs> nah you can go ahead real quick. Go ahead. All right. Well, I'll keep it short. Um. Don't want my coughs to be in the in the mic. <laughs> yeah. So I've just been playing Call of Duty and hanging out with the family. I got sick in the last like 24 hours, so still trying to get over a fever. Um, other than that, it you know pretty good. I've been enjoying Call of Duty. We played the game a lot together, uh, so hopefully you got some impressions to share. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, get your flu shots. Get your kids to get their flu shots. <laughs> um, uh, spreading the flu like crazy. Yeah, that man sounds like a totally different person. <laughs> nah, it, it it definitely is that it's, it's flu season, so it's for sure time to get them. And it's um definitely out there. And I, like I said, it's it's a. Uh, I'm I'm glad you're here. I uh, appreciate you still stopping in and kind of doing this with us. Um. But what about you, Jalen? Uh, what you been up to? What you been doing? How's life going? Well, how's the how's the how's the um, I guess I don't know, not so single, but single ish life going? How's that going for you? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, he he, he ain't think that was coming. He was like, "What? Man, stop playing with me, baby." <laughs> For the week, he said, "Stop, stop blowing my cover, my baby." <laughs> he said, "They all support." <laughs> nah, just <Man>. play. <laughs> <laughs> nah, go ahead, my guy. I'm, I'm just playing. Whoever, to whom we make concern, I'm just playing. <laughs> Man, so everything. Now, nah, just real quick, Josh Mira sick too. Yeah, he said. I thought he said to stick. Uh, my bad. No, um, I'm sick <laughs> just because I work with kids. Um, oh. The rest of the family, oh, okay, don't kids. Yeah, ha ha, don't kids. That's yeah. cool. And I'm, I'm snotty nose brats. <laughs> <laughs> Little booger. Little booger Not babies. <laughs> yeah. But nah, um, excuse me. Uh, I'm trying to think. You said how is um. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I mean, everything been up to what you've been doing. Um, they coerced me to get Call of Duty. Not just why. <laughs> I mean, you know, like they said last time. You know, if I had a good reason to get Call of Duty, like a as a you know, I got the I believe in the power of friendship. So <laughs> they're like, look, man, this is the best we can do. We can't always get Overwatch. That's a better reason for me to get it than for them to just want me to play Call of Duty. So. Um, I caved and got Call of Duty, not the bold edition because somebody didn't hold up their part of the bargain. I ain't never said I was gonna get that game, but I yeah, did get the regular yeah. Call of Duty version. Um, I mean, it's been straight. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest. I mean, we could talk a little bit more about Call of Duty first impressions, all that type of stuff, but I've been playing it, enjoying it for the most part. Got to squeeze a couple matches in. I mean, it just dropped this past what Friday or whatever. So, midnight releases look totally different than what they used to. Yeah, you know, more lining up and all that type of stuff. You got all the digital <laughs> stuff. I kind of missed nostalgia a little bit. So, um, 
other than that, I mean, I ain't really been playing nothing. I had played a little bit of like hyper late, but that wasn't this past week. That was last week or whatever. So, um, but yeah, I mean, everything is straight, man. Just the same old rigmarole. I'm trying to really start going to the gym in the morning time. I used to be able to do this a little bit better, but I'm not, haven't been able to do that as well. Like I literally woke up at like 6 a.m. today ready to, or planning to go to the gym, but I couldn't get out of bed. It was like it had like a hold on me. Like I, don't, <laughs> I couldn't get out of bed. So I just sat there, but I'm trying to see what I can do. Probably go to the gym tomorrow morning and make sure I do it. So y'all people that's listening, make sure y'all hold me accountable too. So, but that's about it. Uh. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty much similar. I haven't been doing much outside of playing Call of Duty. Um, I've been enjoying it. So we're going to talk about it here in a few seconds because that's what we're going to start with. But, um, yeah, I've, I've been playing that. I've been playing with my Steam Deck a lot. Uh, you know, the Steam Deck OLED got announced. So I've just been trying to get back to, you know, making sure I understood where everything was and how I, how you what I used because I was going to I was planning on just upgrading um, and trying to see what that process looked like. So I've just been playing with it and I'm so ready to get off that 64 gig because I'm using like the cryobytes tools to kind of keep my storage low because i'm put if you put too many games on it is basically it, it gets too too big i was at zero bytes yesterday i'm like this is ridiculous so um i can't wait for it to upgrade honestly but um yeah we're gonna talk about the steam deck oled a little bit more too uh but yeah i've been doing that i i ain't really been doing much um and i've been playing a little bit of uh tiny tina's wonderland um that's a that's not a repurchase i didn't buy it the first time i got it on epic game store but i did buy it on steam because i was like and then i just transferred my save because i was like i'm sick of <laughs> i don't want to play on the epic game store so uh i ended up tr transferring it over it's it works very a lot better on my steam deck with that and um I'm, I'm I've been I've been trying to get through that a little bit too. So on the side, as I sit with the kids, because it's pausable and it's pretty much mindless fun. So yeah, I've been playing that. Uh, but we got a lot more to talk about, a lot more interesting stuff than Tina Times Wonderland. But yeah, that's what I've been up to. Kids are great. Life is great. Uh, everything is fine in that regard. So I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. So. What um what are your what are what are our what are our what's our initial thoughts on modern warfare? I think they kinda understand where we was at a little bit, but I kinda wanna give y'all wanna hear y'all thoughts first before I kinda go into a spiel. I wanna hear the let the let the people hear y'all talk for once <laughs> before me. Uh talk tell talk to me, Jalen. What's what what's your thoughts on um Call of Duty Modern Warfare three, your impressions? Um, let, let's start with multiplayer and then you can hit, um, war zone and then zombie or whatever, however you want to. So I will say just real quick, Josh told me that you can buy like a sound pack. Um, it has like a lot of the MW2 <laughs> feel, um, but you can buy a sound pack and make the sounds and stuff. Like y'all heard in my previous podcast, I'm big on music. I guess you can get the old little Modern Warfare 2 music and stuff like that, which is something I might be willing to invest in. I got to see. Um, but just going into, like, the game itself, I mean, a game straight is Call of Duty. Like, you play Call of Duty, I don't really feel like it's anything that's, like, new. Um, I think it's a little different for me now that they don't have a little Classic 3 perks. Um, they got a lot of the Modern Warfare stuff where, um, like 2019 and I guess Modern Warfare 2, where you put the little attachments on your gun, how they modify the stats, all those mm -hmm. different things. Um, I mean, I guess all oh, that's cool. Um, I just say, if I'm just keeping it like overall, I kind of remember why I like Call of Duty and I kind of remember why I stopped playing Call of Duty, <laughs> um, as I got older and stuff like that. So I kind of had some of those experiences. This this week, uh, I think it's a it's a solid game for the most part. Like with the multiplayer, not talking about Warzone and Zombies because I got very few um exposure to those things, very little exposure to those. But um, I mean it's cool. I mean you you know you got the little six on six, it's a long wolf type of game. Just go around shoot people, laser tag. Um, I mean you're not getting nothing different. You still get killed around the walls. Um, 
you still got your guns, some that's old piece, some that's underpowered, the little balances, uh, you know, the different builds that's mm-hmm. made certain, you know, things that's better than other ones or whatever. Um, I don't really have, it's not anything that I would say personally that I'm like, man, this game is so fun. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's just something quick to get into. Just go around, shoot some people, see if you can go off and stuff like that. Um, and then just, just cut it off. Uh, I'm not the probably the best person to ask about Call of Duty. It's not like Josh and Deontay probably been enjoying it a lot more than me. Um, not, that's not to say that I don't enjoy the game. I think it's fine. I always had this relationship with Call of Duty where, um, well, not always. As I started playing Call of Duty a little bit more repetitively, I started mm-hmm. to develop this relationship where, like, when I'm Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops and Black Ops 2 was out, I used to enjoy it a lot more and p- can play a lot of matches and stuff. But I kind of get into this thing where, I cut on Call of Duty. The first couple matches is cool, depending on if I'm like going off or not or whatever. And then it started getting into this repetitive thing where I'm playing it. And then, and it's just a personal standpoint. I like it, just get annoying. You know, you shoot, you point and shoot, um, you die. Sometimes my head gets tight, so just be acting weird. You get into some of those garbage matches and people just scraping you and. You know, it's just stuff. It just it ain't in the cars for you to be going off today. That's always always chopped up Call of Duty. It's not in the cars for me to be going off today. Um, so my standpoint, I had to get a game like a like a six or a seven. Um, like it's decent to play. I can't sit there and play it for a long period of time. And I don't mm-hmm. like after playing other multiplayer games like Destiny, Overwatch, um, just different games. I started understanding that there's more to multiplayer and team-based things than Call of Duty do not influence team-based things. Even when you play objective game type, the most stupidest thing is that you can win objective game type when everybody negative KD, when everybody else pops. Like, that is the most oddest thing to me. And Call of Duty is the only game where I really feel like that is something that's consistent. Whereas, mm-hmm. like, in Overwatch and Destiny and stuff like that, that is not the trend. Like, somebody has to be going off Call of Duty. You can literally begin scraping and still win the game. So, what I'm getting at is, is reminding me of like the camping and stuff like that. Uh, some of the imbalances, how it's literally, you don't have that much versatility in how you take down opponents. Yep. Um, it's just, you just need to be quicker at, at pointing at people and shooting and stuff like that, which is, I don't spend, I don't play the game enough to be invested to get that good at Call of Duty. My peak at Call of Duty is MW3, where my KD was over too. And then after that, I seen it was pointless to be doing all that. Then that's where my downturn with Call of Duty started. I'm just like, it ain't no point. So, um, But that's a little bit of that. I just felt like when I play games like Overwatch, I have different options or different combinations with teammates where I can try to take down things versus Call of Duty. Just It's just real simplistic, and it's a little bit uh, brain dead in some areas. But um, I'm going to just end that because I'm like ran and stuff. So go ahead. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead, Josh. What you, what you got for us? Ray of sunshine. No, I think that's that's all fair. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Call of Duty is a sweaty game, and the skill based matchmaking is like a lot of the biggest issue. Where you do good one game, and the next game you gonna fight the you know top MLG players. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I personally don't mind it because Mm-mm. Call of Duty at its core is always very competitive. Like they're even like people say they want casual Call of Duty, but they they still want 30 kills and like 10 kills to be caught in Mm -hmm. and just that type of game is like very competitive like sometimes you're in the mood for it sometimes you you don't want all that um that being said my perspective is based on the last call of duty game uh modern warfare 2 and this one is a big improvement over it overall so far yeah mm. okay the chain the it's mostly minor changes to like the perks and the the matchmaking and the maps and things like that because you know it, it did come out that this was originally planned as dlc but that being said what's here i feel like is good at its core mm-hmm. you know maybe that's not the main game i play but at least i have a when I'm in the mood for like a really competitive shooter, I don't have to play Rainbow Six. I don't have to play Battlefield. I can hop on Call of Duty. The game runs well. Um, I'm surprised they had a really good launch. Like no, 
dead servers or nothing like that, like Overwatch right. and nobody else. When they launch, so the game don't work. <laughs> so, well, they they had a weird launch where some people couldn't log in, but I think um, that was the, the initial first day of like campaign, right? It wasn't really the initial initial launch, right? Am I, or am I mistaken in that? Was that the uh, the campaign? I didn't see anything in regards to the multiplayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, um. um Oh, you continue. Sorry. I mean to cut you off. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't have much to say about the multiplayer right now either, other than it's fun, but it's better to play with friends. When I play solo, like it's it's more annoying. Like I'm trying my best to win, but my teammates are just trash and we and the other team, they're like super coordinated. Somebody always on the objective and we can't we just cannot get that objective. Right. Um but when I'm playing with y'all, my bad. It's a little a little easier. Um, that being said, I've mostly been playing zombies. Uh, zombies is a good way to progress in the game. Uh, unlock weapons, unlock gear, and perks. And it's pretty, like, fun and um, relaxing. Like, it's not too intense. Like, I remember playing old zombies, and, like, it's, it's, it's cool for the first couple of rounds. And then, like, once you start getting into those higher rounds, like, you get one hit killed and stuff like that and it, it personally it got really annoying because you have to be like super coordinated and then one mess up it, it'll mess up the whole thing and you gotta start over whereas like here it's not that that type of game it's um open world go around do contracts go to the higher level get some higher level gear um but anyways it, it's fun uh, i've been enjoying it so overall I, yeah I, I would say i give call of duty like um a seven, maybe a eight, depending on season one. Because my only gripe, I guess, is how it transitions over from the previous game. Whereas, like, we kind of in an in between season where you get all your old guns and stuff, but it's also the old battle pass and uh, the old shop. And it, it kind of feels weird where it's like not really a full new launch, which I would like to see what. Like season one of Modern Warfare Three is like because it, maybe season one is trash, they mess up the balance and stuff like that. Um, but overall, so far it's a pretty solid experience. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think there is a lot to say about what true value is. Do I feel like I got my hundred dollars worth? Ecky nah. But I do feel like there is value in just having a different option that is a little bit more mindless in a sense where I don't have to like you, we, we kind of talked about this the last pod, but there is that it, there's, there's, there's value in just having that option. And I think call of duty fulfills that because that is probably the most tuned shooter out there. That's mindless. Even if it is a little bit um, of, in that sense of brain dead, uh, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't go that far calling it brain dead. I would call it more so less about team, more about me. And that's just the Call of Duty nature. Um It's very tunnel vision. It's very tunnel vision. Like they don't they don't reflect and look back and say, Okay, if my teammate just died, should I go around this corner too? Oh, but they just go around that corner too. It's like those types of things where you see things happening on the field. Where you see your spawn just switched, but they still run around like madmen sometimes. And you're like, why did you just do that when you know they just switched spawns and they're probably coming from behind you now? So it's just like you can see it because you're objectively more conscious about what is happening on the field. They're just looking for the next kill. So I don't think it's necessarily a Call of Duty problem. I think it's more of a mindset problem of when you play Call of Duty and how that nature has been cultivated for this game like that is the nature in my opinion it's just like mindless run and gun it's never been about and that's why i said i always like to play the objective and i like to play the coordinator for how we gonna stop people from just being mindlessly killed is counter uavs and uavs i just counter everybody's uav so they don't see everybody every five seconds and that is my game that is my contribution to the team and I don't care for many kills. I care to win. So it's a 
it's my value proposition to the team. But at the same time, they're not giving that and they're not reciprocating that. Most of the time, it's just I got a ton of kills, so I'm going to help you in that way versus I'm going to be on this objective as much as you was. Like, I, I barely get anybody on a, like an objective like I am in a game where I'm like sitting there for minutes and I got minutes on the objective versus everybody else. So there is um, plenty of times where I'm just lone wolfing it. And sometimes just because they're uh, getting enough kills, it does work out. But, um, you know, Jalen brought up a good point in regards to that. Like, it is kind of a, a brain dead situation at times. I just don't think it's the call of duty, that game that is brain dead. I think it's the nature behind I mean, it. I mean, like, granted, I don't, I don't play a lot of games and stuff like that. But I think the um, annoying fact about call of duty were, I mean, I guess, I guess you can't say it's brain dead. but I to your point where you're saying that it's more so like the mindset when playing Call of Duty versus Call of Duty, I feel like some of that stuff is influenced by the way Call of Duty is played is because like it's, it's just weird things that you need to play to, like pay attention to in a game. Like something stupid is like spawn flipping. Like that is mm-hmm. an odd thing to even have to pay attention to while you're playing a game. Like why am I worried about where people spawn at and then the game like, now, let me just stop that. That's not. Brand yeah, new. I'm just I mean, that. they just push into they push into a lot of the fast pacedness. Like they they move too fast for their servers and their under in the game flow to keep up. Like game flow can't keep up with how they make these games entertaining for the masses. Like that is not a good system. Like that's why you think why you think everybody can't sprint in Overwatch is <laughs> because it makes yeah. no sense to continuously run into next the next individual and keep staying away from your team they 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 put in uh, things to make sure that they are slowing down making you prepare and then people hate it when they do that like modern warfare 2 is what they started with they wanted to slow people down people hated it and that is the reason why they're in their own they're trying to become a different game when they sh- and in reality, they should just lean into it more and innovate within what they have, because there is no way to stop people from wanting to live in this same mindset of Call of Duty, where they just run and gun, because that is what they cultivated throughout the years. They cultivated this like this is what they did on themselves. And now when they try to change it, everybody says it's the worst. Like Modern Warfare 2 is the worst, literally for what? <laughs> slowing down the pace, slowing down the yeah, pace like, and making um... and making like making it more about objectives and things like that. That, that. that is literally why people cried it and said it was the worst Call of Duty ever. People didn't like the class-based Call of Duty game. What, what was that, Black Ops 4? They had, yeah. Um, yeah, classes. So I think, they, <clears throat> my bad. I think they've tried to change, but yeah, yeah, the community won't accept it. And then, you know, maybe it's too late. Call of Duty is what it is at this point. Yeah. Uh, that being, being said, I think the team base... Uh, nature of Overwatch is is fundamentally different. Yeah, like agreed. you can't help your teammates in Call of Duty. Like if I see Jalen run for it, there's nothing I can do to help him. I can't pull him back with like Life Weaver. I can't heal him or nothing. I can't even like revive you. So games. That's why games like Battlefield and things like that are technically more team based because you you don't have you can do other things other than go for kills. You can literally help your teammates stay alive so mm-hmm. in call of duty you're not helping your team if you're not going positive uh, i mean unless you like are laying on the objectives 24 mm-hmm. 7 um that's it you know yeah and that's uh, tough to do when you're getting bombasted bom- like bombed from the person that's like yeah. going on other other team going off like there's impossible it's impossible for you to get out of that rhythm if you get fall into it that's why you need to have people are understanding the roles of or the the objectives of the game but they don't because they just want to go get the next kill so then you're sitting there getting bombed every five seconds and you're not able to get out this whole this 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 carrier this airstrike um just covering over everybody when nobody has ran the ran the equipment or switch because you can switch loadouts because they want you to be able to do everything um and and blow that up you know, so there's there's there there is a dynamic that they can't fix. And I think that's where you're kind of butting heads with it. I I just find it fundamentally enjoyable because 
it's like an odds that you're against. You're like, you're all, it's like pretty much you, you and your team are you yourself and a team are like, are at odds with each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, and it's finding ways to become better than what, um, become better than what they may need at the time, but also exceeding that. So I do still find the mindlessness to be enjoyable, but I also come at it from a different perspective, um, where I'm looking at it as, um, how can I make, how can I change this? How can I make this better? How can I run around? How can I continue to like make this work even with the teammates I have? And that's where I have fun with loadouts. I have fun with changing out my style. I have fun with sniping. I have fun with, um, sitting, sitting and, and like, and even like using, um, you know, when I, when I, when I, when I run certain types of things like where, where you can stop grenades and stuff from being blown up the century or i forget what they call it trophy systems um stuff like that just just knowing that okay i'm playing objectively if i'm trying to stay keep an objective and it's a smaller map and i think about it in that way but it is still at the end of the day it's call of duty so um but yeah those types of things where it's fun to have 10 different loadouts it's fun to be able to swap between them instantly it's fun to be able to try to take um, to, to try to adapt to what they're doing and what, how they're, how they're playing and things like that. So, um, uh, my thought process of, out of it all, I think the most innovative part of this whole thing is the zombies. Mode. And I think I'm gonna get a lot of flack for that, but I just think that the zombie mode, in my opinion, is the most interesting. I've never been interested in zombies. Um, I don't care. It just seemed like it's, it's repetitive and not rewarding to me. But this feels a lot more rewarding because you can go in, you can do things. And I know that that was something that you could do in the past, but this is something that I feel like I truly have a reason to not only drop in because it's going to allow me to get, you know, upgrade faster. But it's also giving me options on how to on to 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 strive for something, to go into tier two, to go into tier three, to get out of to to be able to extract out of that and actually win. and fight the bosses and really encounter things that may be random and different. Um, and it's, it's, it's really nice that way. I, I mean, I understand that that was something that they did before. I just never understood the concept. And I think having an open world space to kind of explore may feel a little bit like cheesy and that they just kind of mash two things together. But I think they, I think as people play it more, they start to like it more because they understand that there is a true challenge here and there's a lot to come back to do. Versus just being a one and done thing. Like I'm not interested in fighting and getting a better time or how, whatever the case may be. I'm more interested in the, the aspect of having a lot to do and kind of trying to compartmentalize it all to kind of get to where I need to be. Um, and, and, and there's, there's, there's a reward factor there. So I think that's the most innovative thing. It could be just copy and paste in DMZ and maybe that's components that I didn't know about that I now enjoy because it's done this. I'd like the zombies a lot more the most. And I, and I think multiplayer is just fun from a spurt type of situation. Like in the spur of the moment spurts, like I want, I don't want to play it constantly, but when I do get to play, I think it's, it's pretty nice. So, um, I say, I give it like a seven and a half out of 10, almost eight. I'm around that same boat. Um, campaign wise, I don't really hate it. I'm sorry, but it's four hours. It doesn't seem the bad. I got like three missions to go. I'm not crying. I'm not upset. I'm not like, oh, this wasting my time. I don't feel that way. So maybe I'm just I'm so not used to Call of Duty that when I come back to it, the little offerings that they have, I'm not complaining. But I understand what a game is. I understand what development is. I understand when it's just like really feels like it's just been cheapened. And I, I just don't feel that way. I just feel like it was less and, and, but it wasn't like super cheap to me. Um, how do you feel about the campaign, Josh? I, I, I know you played the last three. I've played the last two. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, yeah, I played Modern Warfare one and two, and I just felt like it fell into line with the rest of them. But what do you think? I mean, yeah, I think Modern Warfare 2 was pretty standard. Like, I, I would say it's like a six campaign. You just go around the world, you know, blow up some some enemies and drive some cars. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, my my thing is, I think with 2019, they really like had a um, a really really good formula. Whereas like the missions are really short, but they're like um, they're about like a topic. Whereas like it like my favorite mission on that game is only five minutes long. It's like you're going into a apartment building that's full of like suspected terrorists, and it's like. You're sneaking into the apartment building. You know, the whole family is there, their kids, their wife, the the actual terrorist people. And it's like, we're trying to like really get you to feel what it would be like in a situation where you know it's dangerous people, but also you gotta be careful because it's like families here. And they that mission is well designed. Like you can shoot out the lights, you can do a whole bunch mm-hmm. of stuff to approach it differently. Whereas like I know for a fact that people were complaining with Modern Warfare 3 is like a lot of those mechanics don't exist in Modern Warfare 3. Like you can't shoot out the lights and the enemies, you know, can't see you or stuff like that. So I think that what they had in the first game was really good, mm-hmm. but they didn't capitalize on that. We're keep making it better. Keep making like, I mean, if you got a Modern Warfare game and it's about like real world event, then it kind of should be like, not necessarily have a message, but like, what are you trying to get across? And I don't think with Modern Warfare 2 and probably with Modern Warfare 3, there is nothing that they're, they're trying to get across. They just want you to blow up stuff. Mm. No, and, and, and I, I received that. I kind of get that. Um, so it's, it's a, uh, for me, it feels like a lot of the blockbuster movies where it's just a good time, not necessarily something I need to kind of involve myself too much into. Oh, yeah. And I think that's I think that is kind of what's causing me to be like, I don't really care. Um, yeah. But it, I get it. It does bounce between like a um, a real serious, like born identity or something like that and Fast and the Furious. And personally, oh, for sure. I don't like when it turns into Fast and the Furious. Oh, but yeah. You know, that's probably what is easiest or like maybe a lot of people do like it. But yeah. Yeah. No, I get you. So um I I I I stand firm in the purchase is the purchase. I think um seventy dollars is a lot to ask for um this game. Um but I think what it what it provided me as of now is enough enjoyment to feel like I'm satisfied with it. Uh, it's not the greatest. It's not the best, but I never expected it to be. I, I know what I'm kind of purchasing when I play Call of Duty. Um, I don't I, I still don't put it under like the scope of an NBA 2K or Madden. It just doesn't feel that cheapened in that uh, lackluster. It just feels as if it's like two, maybe once two steps above um, maybe a far cry or <laughs> something like that where it doesn't hurt. To buy it but you know what you're getting and you're not like 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 i know everybody that probably played far cry primal was like what the heck is this and um and it felt like it should have been like some dlc but I'm, honestly i think because we, everybody's so familiar with these games now it's just like anything they do and i think they even mentioned this that it it was technically supposed to be a dlc but I think every last one of them can be DLC. I don't really think any of them needs to stand alone at this point. So I never felt that like, oh, I felt robbed now. No, because when have I ever felt like Call of Duty was worth the money? Never. So only time I ever felt that way is with three. Well, previously, you know how, uh, you know, it's like at the beginning for me, never, never towards the end. Not when I'm like, I'm actually, you know, have some intellect, been educated. <laughs> so, no, I'm not saying that. I, I don't want to put that out there. People that play Call of Duty have a fond memory or an enjoyment of that game, period. There is no, no reason to kind of downplay what they enjoy and what they like. Um, I, I only I reserve that solely for NBA and Madden people. Uh, so. So Call of Duty is fine. And I enjoyed it and I'm kind of. I'm glad you guys find some enjoyment in it because it kind of gives us something to play a little bit as we move on and unfortunately wait for um, <laughs> something that, you know, Apex announced a long time ago, cross progression. Uh, I was well, supposed to come what uh, October 31st. 
it is now the 15th and I still have not received cross progression uh so you know until a- apex per- stop pretending like they're broke um and honestly i don't even know if i want to play that game now man because they just because of this whole thing like don't announce something and then tell me it rolls out over a couple of periods of weeks like that is the goofiest thing ever like i'm not even playing the post malone little thing where i wanted to try it out because i'm not finna play that game for no reason i'm gonna rant for like two minutes so call so so apex legends and if you as you all know they announced cross progression back in october 31st they basically said it was announced it was ready log in you got it and then the day before or the day of they announces that oh no we never said it was coming out everybody we're going to be rolling this out over time nobody got it the first day we did set a poll online and it was like what seven percent of people that that's on this very prominent um youtube channel that does nothing but apex seven percent of people were have received it that is ridiculous that tells me that they have been slowly putting this out in like the slowest way possible and it's just unacceptable and i think that apex should be ashamed of themselves respawn should be ashamed of themselves and i think that this is just like it is so like i don't want to say anti-consumer because it's a buzzword but it just feels like they don't care about anything outside of making some money and i just don't like it but i think they would have made more money if they would have actually prong out something that people were highly anticipating and wanting to play on their systems and now nobody even wants to play the game until they and, and they're just holding off until they can finally play their entire collection together and play it where they where they're meant to play it. It's just it just feels ridiculous. And I, maybe I'm in the minority here, um, but it does not feel great to kind of have this to wait for this stuff. And it's a first world problem, but whatever. I just feel like it's stupid for you to announce something and then not have it ready. It's ridiculous. But yeah, that's it. I'm done with the Apex Legends. Um, any last thoughts on uh, Call of Duty um, before we move past? Um, I mean, I guess since it's kind of like the biggest conversation right now, people, they enjoy it. <clears throat> but they don't like the skill-based matchmaking. What are y'all thoughts on, I guess, skill-based matchmaking? Which means if you get a 2.0 in your first game, your next game is going to be or your next few games are going to be 2.0 players. Um, like, how do y'all feel about that? Should it be completely random, or you want to be matched with people who are always challenging you? I, uh, I fight with the nature. I'll go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. Go ahead. I fight with the nature of Call of Duty. I mean, you're going to have all types of people playing and stuff like that. I think, unless it's like some type of competitive game mode or something like that, I think it should be random. Like, I don't I don't think skill based matchmaking needs to take place with that game, especially when it's just a lone wolf type game. If it was, I'm a, I'm a little bit more okay with it on Overwatch because I don't want to be playing teams where I'm steamrolling. Like, this is a, a team where people need to work together and stuff like that. And I like collaboration with teams and stuff like that to some capacity. But I mean, if it's just a point and shoot game, I, don't, I could be playing a game and not know Deontay in here like we was doing on Wasteland. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't need skill based matchmaking because it don't yeah. matter. Like, yeah, I didn't even know he was in a game until halfway through it because that's how much involvement is there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can go ahead, Deontay. Nah, um, for skill based matchmaking, I feel like it's um, it's a little bit. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of on the end of letting it be. I don't really want it to be where um, I'm just playing random things most of the time but at the same time i've seen what skill-based matchmaking did to destiny i've seen what it did to uh, apex i know that is it's kind of um a little bit of a plague sometimes it can zap the fun out of it but i am someone that wants to be challenged most of the time and i do feel like there is some merit in having some skill base but i think when they kind of go overboard is where they lack the understanding that uh there is you're when you're getting steamrolled and then they kind of wait till you you beat somebody they do they, they make it make it go all over again i, I don't like the highs and lows but there is 
some form of cadence to be had with skill based matchmaking. I'm not saying I'm a I'm not saying I'm super pro skill based matchmaking, but I'm definitely not saying that I don't think it should be there. Um, I think that yeah. at some points, um, I value I value some skill being done in like pub pub matches, and I value a lot of it in ranked. Like I don't want to play ranked, but I don't I definitely don't want to play with some scrubs uh the whole time either. Like that's not what I want to do. But I don't want to play ranked either. So I'm in that middle part where I'm like. Oh, let me go in here, challenge myself, try to get some more kills. Let me get some more wins. But I'm not trying to play no sorry people because when we used to play sorry people in Apex, oh, I hated it. I hated it so much. I knew we were steamrolling people for no reason. I just felt like it was like a waste of my time at that point. I didn't find enjoyment in like the challenge. I didn't find like I didn't cook nobody. I just, you know, they, they were just out in the open being dumb and I killed them. That was it. So mm -hmm. I do find value in skill based matchmaking. Now, do I feel like it can yeah. be tuned a lot better? Absolutely. Um, depending on where you are and stat wise, how much time you play. I think a lot of that stuff should come into play. Um, if you're in like the thousand hour mark, you know, there's obviously a reason for you to not be with the casuals. Um, but if you're in like the 20, 40 hour mark, I write like right now. I think Call of Duty should still be holding off on skill based matchmaking for at least another month. And then once they really have the data to show truly where people should be, that's when they should start to kind of separate. But right now, I don't think that should be the case. I think that this is not enough data, not enough understanding. Like this is a totally different game. I don't even care if they have hours and days in the Call of Duty in the last game. It's an entirely new game. I think that that should be the norm because it provides one a lot of, you know, I, I wouldn't call it like it, it's it does come into a manipulation. I guess if you're kind of waiting for the reviews to drop and you're like, oh, turn on skill based management again. But I think that there is value in holding off in like that first two to like one or two months, giving everybody a chance to understand the game. But if you're breaking people up um, almost immediately, I think it's just not. I think it puts a sour taste in everybody's mouth. I think it feels as if you're everybody's not having fun. I think there's there's value in having like good players on a team, bad players on a team because they all learn from each other. Like I learn and I see people's loadouts. I see that and I understand what they are kind of using, how they're jumping around corners. So there's plenty of people that we've played over the couple of course of the you know week that he was like dang this dude going off but if i didn't have that ability to see this guy because i'm literally in a, a group of people that's not that great i don't really think i'll enjoy that so um i think we should hold off on and get keep everybody in for a second give it some time give it a lot of data understand how these people play understand if they're match to match if they're consistent if they're if they're less than, if they're seeing other people that comes up against them, understanding where that person is and kind of getting like a really good system going before you start to just shut people off. I think it's I think is um, unnecessary. And I think people are even probably staying at their skill based matchmaker right now, but they probably not even turned it on yet. I don't think they have, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I, I think skill based matchmaking has its place. Maybe it is, it is too aggressive sometimes, but um, mm -hmm. I would prefer it than just like not having. But I will say that I think that Call of Duty players in general are the not the the skill floor is higher. Meaning, I don't think there are actually a lot of bad, like really, really bad Call of Duty players. Like if you if you can get a kill streak in Call of Duty, you're good at the game, and I think that that's most players. So mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know how you can have, I mean, like in Overwatch, sometimes you can tell like these people have no idea what they're doing, but I feel like they're just playing for fun. I don't think people just play, like just play Call of Duty and are not good at the game. But I mean, yeah, I, like I have never build, come up to somebody that build, did not shoot back, like did not hit me. Yeah, their builds or they're camping or they're doing mm -hmm. like, some glitches. Like everybody is doing this stuff, and like I don't see anybody not doing it. So it's like you you're so knowledgeable about the game that means you're like really good at the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, and I think that that is 
is important to kind of understand is that this game has been around forever and it has it has been very uh it's only been it's only have like simple changes there is never uh never any big jumps and leaps in the changes like everybody wants it to go back to its old ways and it's 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 something that everybody should already know so for me you know call of duty isn't the game that i feel like to suffer from skill-based matchmaking um i think games like apex for sure like there is a clear difference in like overwatch for sure there's a clear difference in a high tier character and a player than a low tier when we got with that top 500 at one time and obviously he top 500 but there was a clear skill gap between us and him and there wasn't anything you can necessarily do about it because it comes with time consistency and understanding versus like oh he just shot me faster then what can you do to make your gun even better or how can you be prepared for when he comes around the corner the first next time i think that there is a difference in how that game is is broken out um versus others so um i I, like i said i value skill-based matchmaking in some places i think it's a little aggressive for sure absolutely Yeah, but um, we we talk about Call of Duty a lot, so you want to get to the news so we can do the Game Awards? Oh, for sure. Like, um, we're going to do this fast, though. I want to talk about the games that didn't make it. <laughs> uh, simply enough, there was a lot of games that didn't make it. Uh, there was games like Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, there was games like, even though, I mean, some of my favorites, I like the Wild Hearts. Obviously, I didn't think it was going to be there. Um, I like the games like even the Metro Prime remake uh, that came out in February 2022. Um, there's plenty of games that I saw that weren't on that list. And, um, and you know, Octopath Traveler 2. Um, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a ton of games. A ton of games came out. A ton of games got missed. Um, Sifu. I don't even know. I think no, that actually that came out. I think it's coming out on Xbox. I'm, I'm, I'm wrong in that. It was another game that I saw that I was like, kind of. Con- I was like, wow, that didn't make it either. Uh, but the biggest ones for me, for sure, was Hogwarts Legacy and um, Octopath Traveler. Um, and a lot of people were kind of mentioning that Octopath Traveler was probably one of the best JRPGs that came out this year. And I was like, I hadn't heard nothing about this game outside of a little bit. And obviously, I know the first one was really good, but it was like a silent drop. It wasn't that it wasn't it wasn't big. Um, but I kind of just wanted to mention those because it, it, it does take a lot to make a game. And the much as I did not enjoy hogwarts date like pacing and like the 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 con the 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 moment to moment gameplay the world they built was amazing the world they actually made was really enjoyable it's just that it was so much other stuff surrounding it that i think that people just was like nope we're gonna keep it out of there but what really amazed me from all of this stuff was that Destiny 2 got (laughs) a nod was nominated for uh, best community support hilarious bro I was like Destiny 2 the game that just fired most of their community support but I'm assuming this was taking place way before it actually got announced and like this stuff was already in the books and everything but that is cr- that is insane. I was like, oh wow! I re- and, I, and I, you know, you know why it's even more insane. It's even more insane because the community did not have support before this. So I was so confused. Like, how do you consider Lightfall to be understood of the community and support? Like, they did nothing right, but they still got a nod for community support. I was so mad when Halo Infinite didn't get a thing. This game has one of the probably one of the better ongoing um, 
it has probably one of the better ongoing support and community support than any other game. Forge is literally keeping that alive. And the fact that they are pre providing the tools for this stuff, like this, all this stuff came out like too long ago. Not like it's been like a problem. How does Destiny 2 get there before Halo Infinite? It just didn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, I just felt like there was a it, that was a very bizarre one. No Man's Sky getting it again is crazy. <laughs> I just don't get this this nominee section of like certain ones is so b- baffling to me. Um, but that's not even the worst. I, well, it is the worst to me. Like Destiny Two shouldn't be there. Um, I don't feel like Cyberpunk should be nominated for as much as it was. I I I really enjoyed Cyberpunk, but that game came out two years. I mean, that game came out too long ago. Came out three years ago. And for the state it was in, I just don't feel like sometimes DLC should be considered the same caliber as a full on game release. But narratively speaking, it's probably one of the better. It's probably one of the best narratives I've played this year. I just don't like it. I feel like it's like double dipping. Like we already you had your shot. You blew it. I don't think you should be coming back to kind of get these nominees. Um, Let's start there. How do you guys feel about DLC being nominated for game categories for this for for game awards? Like, what's your stance on that? I'm probably I'm probably I don't know. Maybe I'm in a minority. What's your thoughts on DLC being utilized as a nod to get into game categories? Kind of like what if you know they put it. Instead of his, you know, Taylor's Taylor Swift's edition. Well, she got a Grammy for that. When we know <laughs> it already came out. Like, do you count that? Like, what are your thoughts on this? Let me hear you. Um, I think it can. Sorry, my bad. Let me. No, you're good. My bad. So um, I think it can get like muddy to like tell the difference between a full game and but I think that it's been going on for a long time. Like every Destiny expansion is technically DLC, and they still can get nominated every year. Same with Final Fantasy fourteen, and then also sometimes DLC is like you know technically we did re-release the game. You can buy a physical. It's on different disc. Blah blah blah. Um, so it it is muddy with but with like updates and things like that. I think the line between the game and DLC is like not clear anymore mm-hmm. that being said i do think that some dlcs are substantial enough or good enough that they they kind of do deserve or not i haven't mm-hmm. played phantom liberty but um the witcher dlcs for example were really large like mm-hmm. like half the size of the main game type stuff and it's like that that on its own kind of deserves a not mm-hmm. so if they had a best DLC category, that might fit better. But then at that point, it's hard to tell what's the DLC because, like, maybe Miles Morales started as DLC, but then became its own game or something like that. You know. So, um, I mm. right now I think it's fair as long as like the game is is good enough. But yeah, it you know it might seem unfair because it knocks out other games that are like full price. Yeah, it knocked not- out Diablo and Hogwarts, in my opinion. Those games were scored at a significantly higher. I mean, obviously, Cyberpunk's Phantom Liberty had a high score, um, but the narrative on the regular regular game, I guess they everybody felt like it wasn't that great. So, and they don't, they don't, they didn't feel like they innovated enough in like how they tell their story. They just think that the narrative itself was a good wrapping. My opinion, I think that that was the best narrative for the year, but I just didn't think that it deserved it over Hogwarts Legacy, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, or um, Diablo. But I didn't play Diablo, so I can't really talk about that. But Diablo, at least, I knew that a lot of people enjoyed the narrative. They enjoyed the cutscenes, and I felt like they did a pretty good job of showcasing the story from a lot of the reviews I've read um, or seen. so there was three other candidates out there. I think that taking that spot kind of took a little bad taste in my mouth. I understand that nobody's going to give Star Wars a thing, but 
but I do feel like Star Wars had a really great story to um, mm-hmm. uh, right along, especially Barrett in Final Fantasy 16. That always made me uh, grind my gears that that game is there. But um, score wise, yeah. Narrative 16. Yeah. And 16. Mm hmm. Now, the one thing I can say about them is about 16 is this is their like actual um, OST phenomenal. I would I, I, I voted for them. I, I, I there's there's thing that was great. It's just that narrative wasn't for me, nor was the gameplay. So it just feels like I don't know where they got that narrative from. I don't know how they thought Final Fantasy 16 was the greatest, but that is one of the most boring Final Fantasies I've ever played. And I'm I stand on that. I stand on business, Jalen. I'm staying on that. We stand on business, but um, but yeah, it's just, I, I, we gonna break down every category. But uh, some some things just felt a little off to me. Um, game of the year. Uh, uh, there was Alan Wake two, Baldur's Skate three, Marvel Spider Man two, Resident Evil four. Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. For my statements, I stated that simply enough, Zelda felt too much of the same, but I know the innovation, their bar was way too high. Even if they exceeded that, it's too close to each other at that point. It's still the bar is so high that, that they have a curse there. Bar is so high, they exceeds it, but they still really close to that first bar they set. So it just feels as if it's the same. It's too similar and too, you know, it's the same to me, but it's not. I know yeah, what they did. To make it 1% better. So yeah, 96, but it's still, yeah, it's better. still super close. That bar is just way too close. Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I have seen 2D fighter. I, I've seen 2D games that are amazing that are great and Simply put, because Mario is in it, does not make it any better. I know that they innovated in a lot of ways, but there's not much you can do for a freaking platformer. I'm sorry. You need to go 3D if you want to be game of the year for me. And that is just not it. I, I understand what they did. But game of the year is a very high caliber, very strong saying. And I think there is no way impossible either of those two games are going to win. If they do win, I, 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 I think I might be going to say. No, nah, it's not going to go on. It's not going to Mario. So they literally just gave them the nod because they did not want other games there. And it, understand that these are throwaways. To my opinion, they're throwaways because they neither one of them are going to win. Now, Resident Evil 4 is a remake. Understandably so. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Res- it's a remake. We played this game before. I get it. It's a game, but I think that this category could have been shifted a lot and I feel like it would have been more competitive if you actually like these game awards. I don't really feel like watching it. I know most of it's going to go to Alan Wake and Baldur's Gate 3. There is no reason for me to truly watch this game awards, but let's talk about it. Resident Evil 4. It's a remake. Spider-Man 2. High bar. You you think Spider-Man 2 going to get it? No. Spider-Man 2, Resident high Evil bar. Spider-Man are not going to get it. Exactly. Spider-Man 2, high bar. To beat that high bar, they went 2% higher. That's it. That is too samey. It is too close. There is literally two games in here that was innovative and really good. And now I think there could have been multiple of those. It could have been Diablo 4. It could have been... Um, it could have been... Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I understand they shot their own self in the foot, but that game, innovation wise, between oh, the old one and the new else, one, uh, much better. One thing they did, um, they clarified like what's the not clarified it, but when you look at the categories, mm-hmm. game of the year is they said phenomenal on aspect, all aspects, including technical aspects. So they they put that there specifically to say why game other games are not there, like Jedi Survivor. It's like its technical aspects were not. Phenomenal um, song. Mm. <laughs> what? Yeah, whatever. I, Baldur's Gate 3 third act, stop talking to me. Um, there's like Alan Wake 2, obviously, is the shoe in. Baldur's Gate 3 might also win it too. 
But this is a boring lineup. I'm not going to lie. Like there is nothing in a, there's nothing there's nothing that tells me that they wanted to have a controversy. They just really wanted to make sure that the certain people that they wanted to win won. And that's fine. I like Alan Wake too. I think it should win game of the year. But it might would have been a lot more entertaining to watch if Starfield was in this and the one game that I know everybody wanted to cr- crap on because of like the whole, you know, the controversy around it, Hogwarts Legacy. Like that would have been more entertaining. But yeah, I, I don't I think know. Hogwarts would have won anything though. I don't think it would have won. The, the games that are nominated, yeah. I don't think it would have won, but Super Mario Brothers Wonder shouldn't be there. Like that is not even that's not even close to winning. I know that for a fact. Like, I mean, <laughs> let me stop speaking in facts. There is very high likely chance. <laughs> That Super Mario Bros. Wonder would get the least amount of votes. It's a very high chance. Uh, and they did not want to make this like... They didn't want to make it hard. Um, this g- game of the year, I'm going to get off of it. Because I can talk about it for a long time. But my vote was for Alan Wake 2. Uh, best game direction. My vote because of what they did before. I'm still going to go with... I, I went with Tears of the Kingdom. So the four, the five are Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Game direction wise, creative vision, innovation, and game direction and design. They basically give you all the tools you would ever need to create whatever you want in this world. There is nothing that can top that type of game direction because there literally is no game direction. It's just literally giving you the keys to build but in a sandbox that is so fulfilling when you do it that is hard to do but it when it's pulled off it is an anomaly and they did it again and they innovated on top of it again so i had to give it to them but i understand because there's like there's game direction like really creating that vision and putting it out there alan wake 2 could be a close shoe in i just know what you know um, unfortunately, I know what Zelda did and what they truly are capable of, and they did all that on a Switch. <laughs> just, there's yeah, no competing with that. that. Um, Baldur's Gate and Zelda are gonna be two high ones, but I also think Spider Man for this one is also gonna have a lot of clout as far as like not necessarily direction, but it's gonna have a lot of clout because they do innovate a lot with like accessibility and like. On the technical yeah. aspect, and so there, it's gonna be high as well. Um, I think Alan Wake is good, but I don't, I don't know if that gets game of the year. It's not gonna get this, so it's, it has to go some, to something else. Yeah, I, I, I really think it's gonna go between uh, Tales of the Kingdom and Baldur's Gate Three, um, because the game direction in Baldur's Gate Three just out creative vision, like being able to do whatever you want. And like how you break the game really and like literally kill off main characters like those types of games that can keep going after that type of stuff those types of games deserve a, a nod and i think that these two in itself where you can create and do whatever you want really it's it's hard to beat so between those two that's what my thought was alan wait two i think they created a creative they created something spectacular but i think they should they should fit more into art not game direction uh, best narrative it is Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom, Liter- Phantom Liberty, Final Fantasy 16, and Marvel Spider-Man 2. Um, I did go ahead and give the nod to Cyberpunk, even though I don't want it there. Um, yeah, I think Cyberpunk is going to take that. Um, yeah. Final Fantasy and Spider-Man, no. I know that people like Spider-Man, but I also see people complaining about like the story. So. I think um, that they if, if they can't do much new like like I said I what I want from Somniac now is they're to create their own IP um and kind of really focus in on making something fun and enjoyable but at the same time I know that they have a they they they're, they're so much better than um they're so much better to me than to continuously work on already um curated or already created ips i know they can do it well they they already shown that multiple times times and time again 
I think it's now it's time for them to kind of branch out, but they're going to be doing Wolverine soon. So I don't want them to become the Marvel studio that everybody go to to kind of create Marvel stories. I'm, I'm getting too much. I'm getting too much Marvel at this point. And, um, and we going to, we, we pulled to talk about that too, talking about the Marvels, but, um, let's try to get through this quickly. Um, but best narrative, I think if I played Barter's Gate, I'd probably give it to them, but I didn't play it. So I'm gonna go with Cyberpunk. Um, but that to me can be, it can go between those three to me. Barter's Gate 3, Cyberpunk, and Alloy 2. Um, best art direction. This is probably the easiest one for me. It's Alloy 2. Um, but there was Hi Fi Rush, Liza P, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And this is for outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. Alloy 2, because it is like the best looking game, period. So, yeah, what you pick? You said. No, I think Alan Wake is going to take it because oh. those other games, they don't, they look good, but they don't, uh, I don't think, get people talking about how they look. Like, people are going to continuously talk about Alan Wake and how it looks and ray tracing and stuff like that. But they're not going to yeah. necessarily talk about um, Hi Fi Rush. Hi Fi Rush looks good, but it doesn't look like too, too different from anything too else. Too yeah. Like, that's that it hasn't been like. Alan Wake 2 has not been done before, and it's going to be a minute before we see something that kind of over that tops it, um, especially when it comes to PC. So um, I, I just gave it to that because of that alone. Um, best score of music, as you can tell, Alan Wake 2 party and Baldur's Gate 3 party over here. Um, but mm-hmm. we had Baldur's Gate 3, Alan Wake 2. We had Final Fantasy 16, Hi-Fi Rush and Legend of Zelda. Man, you might want to play Jalen. You might want to play Final Fantasy 16. You see how many sc- uh, <laughs> noms it got? <laughs> Let me. <laughs> that, um, Man, I got it's going to be a. <laughs> personally, my bad. Personally, I think Final Fantasy is going to take this just because yeah, the music is good. But also, like, the the story around the composer and stuff. Like, he had cancer when he made the, the, the mm-hmm. soundtrack stuff. So I think that there will be like, an opportunity for, like, not clout, but it will be a good show to have him come up on stage and talk about it. Whereas, like, the other games, I think they're good. And I think High Five Rush is a good soundtrack, but a lot of those tracks are also licensed music and stuff like that. So I think Final Fantasy is kind of like a safe bet for the music. Nah, it's for sure a shoe in. Like, I, Alan Wake 2 would be the next best bet. And then Baldur's Gate 3, I don't even know how much music is in the game like that I, mean, I don't hear music, but yeah i don't really i'm not it's, hearing about it as much i definitely music, heard about yeah. final fantasy 16 so i think that is the true uh winner here and i and and and, and deserving i'm not saying that they, they, they just because he had cancer i'm saying that it deserves it because i've listened to a lot of music obviously i don't like two's music i listen to zelda's music i listen to high fi rush music only one I don't have an opinion on is Baldur's Gate 3 because I'm still waiting to play that later. Um, but uh, for sure, the most interesting and like that kept me in the moment and got me through a lot of that game was the music for sure. Um, best audio design. Alan Wake 2. <laughs> the Alan Wake party. Uh, Dead Space, Hi-Fi Rush, Marvel Spider-Man 2, and then Resident Evil 4. I gave it to Dead Space simply because of the history and I'm basing it off of that. I'm not even I haven't played this yeah. one, but I know that if they were able to even get close to what they did before, there is no reason why this shouldn't be the best audio design ever. So and I think everybody yeah. said that. So I'm I was like, oh, for sure. Dead Space. That I is the only game that Dead can do Space that is in this category and not in anything else. I think this is Dead Space's category. Yeah, uh, the runner-up would probably be Spider-Man. I haven't played it, but again, on a technical level, and like Insomniac is always hitting on awesome. Numbers, so, yeah, uh, Spider-Man would be another pick. Yeah, because I think they had 3D audio in theirs as well. Uh, but yeah, let's go. Uh, best performance. Uh, these are individuals like uh, voiceover acting or motion or performance capture. Uh, there was Ben Starr from uh, Final Fantasy 16, Cameron from Star Wars Jedi Survivor, 
uh, Idris Elba from Cyberpunk 2077, Melania Libert from Alan Wake 2, Neil Newman from Baldur's Gate 3, and then Yuri Lowenthal from Lowenthal from Marvel Spider-Man 2. Uh, I don't know Neil. I don't know Yuri. I don't know who they played. I know the other four. He's Spider-Man. Yuri is Spider-Man. Well, that, that tells me how much I know about Spider-Man. Um, okay. He's Peter Parker, right? Yeah. Not Miles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's a bad joke. Uh, um, so I went with Melanie Libert from um, Alan Wake 2 simply because that is the best part of that game for me in Saga. Uh, I felt like I was a, a little bit emotionally attached to her character and trying to get her through this whole scenario because Alan Wake was just messing everything up. And she was like me where I'm like, we just stepping into this and we just trying to get out. So um, she played it very well. I felt like it was it was she was a very important part of the story. And um, to me, she deserves it simply because she she provided the best performance that came um, that had me talking about it, thinking about it after well after I played it. Um, I think Idris Elba was a little too cold. He didn't give enough shine to him as a from a more um, soft spoken space. So he didn't have enough material to really shine through. But I think he did a really good job as well. Um, Cameron did a really good job, too. Uh, but, yeah, I gonna still have to give it to Melanie for me. Um, yeah, but I think a lot of these performances were great. Especially yeah, I think Alan too. Wake has a good chance to win it with Melanie, but yeah. my marketing brain is going to tell me that if they can get Idris Elba on stage, they will <laughs> try to get him on stage. So there's a good chance that he could win it. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, they they might be hitting the look. They 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 might get the uh, diversity card. Woman in black. I don't know. They might have Melanie out there. We'll see. But uh, it's funny how to think about that. But yeah, I I think. Melanie might take it because I think she did a really good job, but it could be uh, some. It could be someone else too. But if Alan Wake's sweeping, you already know she coming with him. Innovation and accessibility. Now this is where um, they finally gave Diablo and Forza <laughs> a <laughs> nod. <laughs> they said, "Oh, yeah, accessibility, y'all did great." And, which is crazy because technological achievement and having 60 FPS ray tracing doesn't make the technological achievement. But whatever, it's a racing game, so they don't care. Uh, Diablo 4, uh, Forza Motorsport, Hi Fi Rush, Marvel Spider Man 2, Mortal Kombat 1, Street Fighter 6. Uh, I gave it to Marvel Spider Man 2 simply because I know how much Sony does um, yeah, when it comes to accessibility. They share staff. They share resources. It's definitely yeah, all the time. They can't worry. <laughs> so I thought they were a shoe in. I know that Microsoft does the same thing, but I, I, I like, I distinctly remember seeing things about the accessibility, and I think they actually promote it um, from like from that stance. I think Forza does too, but I think that they just. You know, they have a presence for it. They have an understanding of, and you know, The Last of Us and all of these. They just, that's just the companies that, that do the best when it comes to accessibility. Um, so I gave it to Marvel Spider Man. Plus, if I'm going to pick between Forza and Marvel, I think Spider Man would probably give me more enjoyment. So I went with Spider Man. Anyway. Um, moving forward, Games for Impact. I really didn't have anybody. So I went with Goodbye Volcano High. And that's the one with the bird people, the little animal people. But there was um, a space for the unbound, chance of Sonar, goodbye Volcano High, Tachia, Terranil, and Vaniba. Um, yeah, I don't have anything for this. Me neither. Uh, and then best ongoing, there's between Apex Legends, which is crazy. Cyberpunk is here, but it should be Halo. With Cyberpunk 2077, uh, Final Fantasy six, uh, 14, Fortnite, and Genshin Impact. I gave it to Fortnite. That is like, there's no, 
other game, in my opinion, that is really doing it on their caliber, their level, and achieving as much as they achieve. So I gave it to Fortnite. Yeah, Cyberpunk got a lot of hype for the 2.0 update, so that's a good chance. Fortnite, mm-hmm. of course, they moved to Unreal Engine 5. Genshin Impact, they got the bots, so you know. <laughs> yeah, they got the votes. Uh, Final <laughs> Fantasy fourteen had a slow year because they, they were focusing on 16, so it wasn't a whole lot going on for 14. Mm-hmm. And Apex, I don't in there at all. I don't see why they're in there. Uh, like I said, I would have wanted to vote for Halo, but it's not here. So, whatever. Uh, best community support. <laughs> Laughable. Bartergate 3. Cyberpunk 2077. Destiny 2. Final Fantasy 14. No Man's Sky. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. I, I mean, I just, I just went with Cyberpunk. I have much on this category. Yeah, yeah, I think Cyberpunk, they have a lot of um, they were in the news a lot about updating the game. Yeah. But I don't think any game in this category is really, like, that great. Yeah. Uh, me neither. So, whatever. Um, Best independent game. This is where Sea of Stars. This is where Jalen, you get the shine, baby. Cocoon, Dave the Diver, Dredge, Sea of Stars, or Viewfinder. <laughs> now. Yeah, this is the. Um controversial category i think sea of stars has a good chance because like it's been pretty popular mm-hmm. dave the diver is not technically an indie game it's made oh. by nexon the Ch- chinese mobile company oh um, really yeah so a lot of people are going to be like up in arms about this category mm. i didn't play cocoon but that's the same as like the inside people um, yeah I didn't hear anything about it. It might be good, but I didn't hear much about it. So I'm going to go yeah. with Sea of Stars. I gotcha. I went with Viewfinder. I think that was like the most innovative one I've seen, creative. But um, but yeah, Sea of Stars could definitely be a shoe in here for best independent game. What's your, uh, what's your thoughts, Jalen? You, you think a Sea of Stars can um, sweep? You think they, they got a chance? I mean, potentially. I mean, I don't, I don't know what they up against entirely. Like he's saying, has been mentioned when they when I look up like game of the year stuff. So, I mean, I guess you can't never rule them out. I mean, yeah, I say they got a chance, but oh man, riveting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, 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 no. I think they. Uh, I think I think for for me, I think CSRs is probably going to take this because that they have the most hype. The most they 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 they, they reviewed the best, um, and more than likely people people just love a t- uh one these types of games anyway. So, I if it was if I was a bet man, I'd put it on CS Stars for sure. But Viewfinder for me simply because of the creativity behind it, and then Cocoon Cocoon would be the next one up because I loved Inside of Limbo and I just haven't tried it yet. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love that one too. Uh, best debut indie game. We got Cocoon, Dredge, Piece of Tower, which I've heard a lot about, never played it. Venba and Viewfinder. Venba got hit hit two of them. They hit the the uh, diversity and this one. I never heard of Piece of Tower, but I heard a lot about it. I mean, I heard about Piece of Tower, but I never knew what the game was about. Like, I don't know what the concept of the game is. Um, Cocoon, yeah, obviously. Um, Cartoon Network style, like art style, and um, I don't know the whole gameplay, but the art style is cartoon, classic Cartoon Network, and that's what like why people Cap- talk about it. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm looking at it. it Look like um, Courage the Cowardly Dog, and well, not Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah, it does look like Courage the Cowardly Dog with these noses. Um, okay, well. I picked Viewfinder for this one. Um, best mobile game, Final Fantasy Ever Crisis. I don't really care about the rest of that. <laughs> best VR. It's gonna be haunting for real. You think so? Oh yeah, yeah. They got the Never mind. And it and it had a good launch and people played it. Final Fantasy is just like a microtransaction like game, and the other games don't mm. uh, really do much either. What about best VR? I, I picked um, Horizon Call of the Mountain. I think that's the only one that really matters. Uh, yeah. Gran Turismo 7, Humanity, Resident Evil VR, Village VR, 
and Synapse. I think between Synapse and this, I think those are the first original ones. Grand Principle 7 is nice, though, too. So, we'll know. We'll see. I think that um, Call of the Mountain, because of the, like, how much it kind of innovates on itself, um, Gran Turismo 7 is like just putting a helmet on and being able to play the game. But it's, I think that's really awesome, too. Um, you might have a little more on this one, Josh. Best action game. We got Armor Core, Dead Island 2, which is crazy Dead Island 2. We got a nod for action. Uh, and not Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> Everybody in that gameplay sucked. I'm just telling y'all. Uh, Ghost Runner 2, Hi Fi Rush. But I guess it, they don't consider it an action game. They consider it something else. But it's not our, it's not a JRPG. That is totally a, a action game, but uh, whatever. I'm done ragging on them. Ghost Runner 2, which I don't think that's action game. Hi-Fi Rush and Remnant 2. Um, yeah, I mean, personally, I would pick Armor Core, but Name then Hi-Fi Rush and Remnant are like the, the two other picks. I know that Remnant yeah. was good. I didn't, I didn't and yeah, high fi rush if it wins anything it will be this guy yep this is the only category they even have a shot at and well the only, the only place that um xbox has a shot to be honest um because i don't think they're going to win um best rpg which is where starfield sits um best action slash adventure we got alan wake 2 marvel spider-man 2 Resident Evil 4, my boy Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and then we got Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. They actually did get a nod for one. But it says, for the best action slash adventure game combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. Yeah. Um, I picked yeah, Jedi. I mean, I'm going with oh, Marvel yeah. Spider-Man, though. <laughs> yeah, I think Spider Man or even Zelda. I think Zelda is not going to get a lot of love this year, but this might be its category. Um, mm. Jedi, I think, on a on a like technical like combat level, is probably the best. But I don't think the combat is always the best. Like, I don't think people are going to gravitate towards that game for the combat. Um, no, if, if more than it being Resident Evil Spider-Man, Four, yeah, like swinging around and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it goes Marvel Spider Man Two. Zelda, Resident Evil 4, Alan Wake 2, then Jedi Survivor. But I just got it flipped because I don't care. Um, but yeah, I think that Marvel might take this one. Spider Man 2 might take this one. But you're right. I think that they're because they not they want to play politics and they haven't shown much love to Nintendo. That one might get it. Best RPG. Baldur's Gate 3. Shoe in. Final Fantasy 16 shouldn't be there. Lies of P, Sea of Stars, and Starfield. I voted for Starfield. Yeah, That's the most Starfield. fun I had, but I think it's Baldur's Gate 3. No, I think this is definitely Baldur's Gate 3. No other game has a chance because, like, that's their category. It's an RPG, like the most innovative yeah. RPG in, in a long time. Starfield is good, but personally, I don't think it's innovative. It, you know, it's. But that but that's the game in space, which is fun. Yeah. It's not new. And no. you know, that's that's what Baldur's Gate is. So. No, they win in that. They sweep in that. I don't know why Final Fantasy is there though. That's my that's my thing. But yeah, I guess I think that should have been an action adventure, but it probably yeah. wasn't gonna win that, so they put in something else. Liza P again, I think action adventure. Um, yeah. I, I think it's good, but I don't I wouldn't say it's just a RPG. Uh, so, <laughs> I told you, Jalen, it was pretty good. I mean, it's getting nods. I, I know that for a fact when a game looks like they're going to actually put some effort into it, and that's probably the one of the bigger ones. Like, I'm really surprised Lords of the Fallen didn't get anything because I think they are one of the same, and I think Liza P might have beat it just a little bit, but I think Lords of the Fallen's whole dynamic world sets it apart from Liza P. Um, but. I, I'm really surprised that neither one of them are in a space where they are positioned to win. Um, I'm not surprised, I guess. I'm more so they're not challenging each other. They're kind of similar games. So. Yeah, I played some of it. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Best fighting. Easy. <laughs> Street Fighter 6. <VI. laughs> I don't even want to talk about the rest of them. But uh, Mortal Kombat 1, Pocket Bravery, Nickelodeon, All-Star Brawl 2, Gotta Rock. Do we think that they're going to give it to Mortal Kombat? I, I think Mortal Kombat would be the wrong pick, but it has a chance because it's popular. Uh, but mm-hmm. this is Street Fighter. Um, like this is the best Street Fighter in a long time, best fighting game in a long time. Uh mm-hmm. and it sold well, so yeah. No, it's way more technically advanced than Mortal Kombat. And um and I could tell that from just playing the beta. So yeah. I think Street Fighter Six has this to shoe in. Um uh, Best Family. This is where they're gonna definitely give it to um Super Mario Bros. Wonder. We have Disney Illusion, Party Animals, Pikmin 4, Sonic Superstars, and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. A game of the year game. Get out of here, dude. We know what you're doing. Like, y'all wasting our time. This is a waste of our time category. But, um, yeah. Ain't no way in the world Pikmin 4 go in. A family game over Mario? The family man? The local plumber? Get out of here, dude. That was a waste. Waste of a category. Um, best sim slash strategy. We got Advanced Wars 1 and plus 2, the Reboot Camp, City Skyline 2. Not happening because of this how it launched. To me, Company of Heroes 3, Fire Emblem Engage, and Pikmin 4. I honestly think it's between Fire Emblem Engage and Pikmin 4. What are your thoughts? Um... I mean, I don't know much about this category. I don't think that Fire Emblem Engage is going to take it personally. Uh, but again, I'm not. I'm not really into uh, this strategy. So. Mm. It could yeah. be Advance War uh, or Company Heroes, but yeah. I don't think it's going to be Company Hero. It could be Advance Wars plus one plus two. City of Skyline, no, just simply because of the outrage. Um, I think because they know Fire Emblem the most, they're probably gonna go with Fire Emblem. Nintendo, man, you got you gotta understand who who's voting. It's us. We're voting. I feel like Fire Emblem is gonna take it. Not Pikmin. Best sports slash racing game. This is where we get a a good win for uh, Microsoft. We got EA Sports FC twenty four. We got F one twenty three. We have Forza. We have Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 and the Crew Motorfest. I don't think there's any competition here. Um, maybe F-123. What's your, what are your thoughts? No, this is Forza. <laughs> this, is a, this is the Forza category, for sure. Like They were playing politics, man. I'm telling you. This is like all politic-based stuff. Best multiplayer. Um, Baldur's Gate 3. Diablo 4, Party Animals, Street Fighter 6, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Um, personally, I would say Street Fighter, just because it has like a good online like mm-hmm. feature set. Um, yep. I think this could be a surprise for Baldur's Gate, because it does have multiplayer, and the multiplayer is good, like it works, but I also think that's not its main focus, so I think it should go to Street Fighter. Yeah, I, I chose Street Fighter. And then I think the last one we're going to do is Best Adaption. And this is uh, recognizing outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment medium. Castlevania Nocturne, Gran Turismo, the movie, Last of Us, Super Mario Bros. movie, and Twisted Metal. I chose The Last of Us. Yeah, I think this is the Last of Us category because it it made you know a big conversation for a couple weeks. Uh, but Mario would also be the other pick because it was top of the box office for a long time. Yeah, I think Castlevania Nocturne is a really good one too, but I don't think people really care about the adaption wise of what it looked like and what they did on the screen. Um, and plus, um, it's not like there's much to go off of from the games in my perspective of like 
okay, this is what happened. This is what truly like like this is like a script. This is what you have. This is motion. This is like truly what's going to happen in this scene. And how did you depict it? So I think that's truly going to be Last of Us. Super Mario Bros. That's just like a totally different space where it's not like necessarily adapting uh, scenarios. It's just adapting characters and like you know the nostalgic moments that people may be aware of. But I think the one that did the most work it was um, Last of Us. All right. Um, I think that's it. They are rest of them about esports, so I'm not gonna go through those. But um, how are we feeling overall? Quick, quick synopsis. Um, yeah, I, I really don't. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna watch it for a few categories, but I really don't care to watch it. Um, I might. I'm gonna definitely watch it for any like reveals because I think it's gonna be a big one this year. But um, yeah, I'm not that intrigued and i don't feel like there's a lot of that go anyways and if they do go another way i feel like everything's safe um and maybe that's fine maybe there were so many good games that it feels like a safe year but um i was looking for a little you know i was looking for a little mix up man i ain't gonna hold you if i would have saw starfield in game of the year i would have laughed because i don't think that should be there but that gives me so much it just it makes me it makes me laugh, but um, but yeah, it, I I just I, I don't know. Everything was safe. Everything felt safe. Everything felt you know like curated. It didn't feel like it was truly what should be there. I mean, what are your thoughts, Josh and Jalen? No, I think typically they try to do a even spread where all the nominated games are going to be in multiple categories, but they're going to win at least one category. So um, I don't see any real upsets. Alan Wake is going to sweep um, a lot of categories. Marvel is going to get its shine. Um, yeah. So I think the fact that they got the nominees out this early mm -hmm. is just to show you that they did all the hard decisions already. <laughs> what games should be included? Now the games that are included, they're just gonna, you know, get their wins and that's it. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Well I think that's pretty much Yeah, I think that's uh that's it for the game awards. Jalen, you got anything you wanna add? <laughs> uh not not specifically, not really. Yeah. You gonna watch it this year? What's the what's the what's the what's the what's the uh over under on Jay uh, Jalen watching it this year? <laughs> I'll take I'll take those odds then. <laughs> uh but yeah. Uh we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. I know that they're gonna be revealing at least Grand Theft Auto six there, which was probably gonna be our next topic. But um yeah, I'm gonna watch it, but I'm not interested. Uh, not in these nominees, not this year. Um, but yeah, Grand Theft Auto Six, ooh baby. You know, you know, you know. Uh, uh, Jeff Neely is rubbing his hands like like no other right now. That man got the juice. You got the juice now. So uh, Grand Theft Auto Six will be announced at the Game Awards. I'm pretty sure it will, um, because it's coming out early. It's coming. It's supposed to be coming. Early December and the Game Awards is when? When, when is the Game Awards? Um, it's like December 3rd. December 7th. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be announced at the Game Awards and it's going to be the last thing. And Jeff is probably going to be cheesing ear to ear. Hopefully, he doesn't get interrupted by any crazy people. Um, but you guys weren't that hype about it. You guys kind of waved it off, and uh, we're gonna keep. We're gonna be real. We're gonna be real with the people. You waved it off. You said that it was not interesting. That um, y'all hit it with a with a brief, you know, shoulder shrug and a, okay. I was kind of confused by that. He explained to the people and Sean to be specific why you had no interest in Grand Theft Auto. Right now, all we got <laughs> is a name, Grand Theft Auto Six. 
Uh, okay. I'm going to drive cars. I'm going to shoot people. Mm-hmm. Let me see the trailer. That's a hype trailer. Then I'll be hyped by it. Right now, uh, it's a name. Uh, mm, mm, Am mm. I hyped for Elder Scrolls 6? Mm. It's just a name. I'm saying, are you hyped to see what they have to show? It seems as if y'all not. I'm just trying to, I'm kind of confused. That's all I was so, saying. I don't, I don't play GTA Online. So that, that's no, the first thing. Nobody plays Second GTA Online. Play, Got it. I mean, everybody and their mama play GTA Online. That's why it's around. But <laughs> uh, I don't play GTA Online. So right, right. I don't care about that portion. Right, right, single right. player. I didn't finish Red Dead Redemption 2 single player. And I think for me, that's why I'm not excited for Red Dead. I mean, uh, Grand Theft Auto. I have to see how they're going to improve on what they did before. If it's a slow pace, like we we spend a whole bunch of time where you just like fixing cars and, and doing side and stuff like that. I'm probably going to fall off like I did with Red Dead. Because Red Dead, the characters were good. The acting was good. What you were doing was not interesting. And so... I want to see something like <laughs> what you're trying to see. Um, what are you trying to see? I, 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 I get your point, but I don't really know what you're trying to see. Cause what I'm trying to see uh, is technical <laughs> and like a technical leap. Right. And from a company that has billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars to spend. If, if that is not an achievement in itself, what is like what is, I'm like I'm not playing Grand Theft Auto for the story. Most of the time I'm playing it. Playing for the graphics. I'm playing for the graphics and I'm playing for the world. Like I don't really care for the but I guess I I guess I'm always interested in the sandbox more than I'm in, in interested in the story. Like it's always a plus when the story's good, like San Andreas. That's why it's probably one of the favorites. But it's never been a main point for me. Like Grand Theft Auto Five so, was, wasn't the main point. It was the point was that they had this really nice looking world they built to me to run around and do whatever I wanted in. That's kind of the yeah, point so of GTA. The I personally I don't play GTA games like they're just cause. Like I'm not riding my bike down mountains. I'm not smashing cars together. I'm not blowing up stuff like. The sandbox, I think, will technically be very intense in that school. I don't personally play that game like that. I play it as a regular game. I'm going to do my quest. I'm going to meet people. I'm going to do the main story. And hopefully that is good enough to draw me in. But mm-hmm. once I'm done with the story, I'm not going back to it. Same thing with GTA V. Like, I didn't spend any time driving around doing silly stuff in the open world and customizing my character and stuff like that. I played the story. And that's it. So that's my approach to it. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what about you, Jalen? Um, what's your thoughts on GTA 6 being announced? And where, where, where is your excitement level? Let's get a pause. I mean, so, to be completely honest, probably going to go against what everybody be saying, or it's an unpopular opinion. I didn't play San Andreas. Didn't really care to play San Andreas. Never really played any GTAs for real. I used to play the old ones, put cheats in, and go around shoot people with tanks. Um, as y'all can see, I got older, and I don't find enjoyment in doing brain dead stuff like that no more. Um, that being said, we tried playing GTA Five. We got put off by the loading screens, the online, the level deficit, just different things like that. So GTA Six, do am I excited for it? Not really. Um, <laughs> and do I plan on playing GTA 6? I mean, I ain't played none of the other GTAs before. I mean, I could potentially get it some chance if it's easy accessibility, but I don't plan on paying money for GTA 6 unless it's something groundbreaking and people play AJ, boy, you really need this game. So, um, uh-huh. I mean, I'm just not like a huge fan of GTA 6. The announcement and stuff, I know some people hyped up. Um, <laughs> I keep seeing posts about it. I'm I'm happy for them. I want to be optimistic. I look into it and stuff like that. But at this point, I'm not happy about GTA Six. I mean, I just never. I, yeah. I thought GTA Five was a. When I see my cousin and stuff play, I used to play. Man, this game was fun. This that, and the third, but again, it just seemed like it. It, it just 
like turn it into a time sink. So, yeah, I, I know Je- Deontay is excited to run up in the gas station, <laughs> stick it up, take all the money, go downtown, buy a Lamborghini, drive it around the world. Like that stuff is uh, cool. Uh, sure, I did that right. in GTA Four. I did that in GTA Five. I did that in San Andreas. Like that stuff, I don't care about. <laughs> So, uh, uh, unless they do something crazy with it, like it's Zelda, and like you really live in this world, and like <laughs> it's no. basically the same. No, then, like, sure, they're, they're, they they're not gonna do Sims anything like that. Whole life. <laughs> but no. other than that, I'm, I only care to see what the story is about and see if it's appealing. <laughs> Well, you might be a single mother, which is a good uh, indication that they probably taking this somewhere. Uh, but uh, no, nah, I, I really, I really am. You know, I, I'm I'm real hyped up that that my friends are enjoying it, and you know, they're at least they're at least have enough attention span to read an article. To read an article, they have enough attention span. To see if it's interesting. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that excited about G- GTA. It doesn't make or break me. It is more so the a uh, level of that. It, what intrigues me the most now is that the, the the level of excitement that y'all have. Like I, I can care less about the game now at this point. It is just the enjoyment I am getting from hearing y'all talk about GTA. <laughs> GTA. It, it. I don't know. It's, it's just funny to me now. Um, be GTA Five, yeah, I be GTA Five. What you mean? What level you at on GTA Online? A zero. I don't play it. Nah. I just know that there is certain companies that the majority of game gamers would in, would be anticipating, or at least providing some form of. Oh, that's cool. I want to see what they had done now. Y'all don't y'all ain't giving that. So it's fine, but it's funny to me. That's all I'm saying. Well, I I I I'm just literally just laughing at that. I'm not, I'm really, I don't I don't really care if y'all interested in GTA or not. I don't expect to get online GTA online at all. I'm not funny. <laughs> I find it funny. Yeah. Happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got hit him with some Ram X. Uh, but yeah, I just find it enjoyable to hear y'all. I mean, the excitement level is through the roof, and, and I, I'm appreciative of how you, how much I keep this hype train going. Uh, but for me, GTA Six, I like I said. I am looking forward to seeing what they are going to, how, how they're going to try to transform this. Because if they do end up doing the exact same thing that we already are anticipating, it's not going, I feel as if it's not going to land well. So I want to see what they actually are going to do with a franchise that has been the same for years. And how they are going to try to innovate on that. And if they are literally just providing a story upgrade, <laughs> I don't think that's enough at this point. That, that, that narratively speaking, I have never been awed by the stories of GTA. And even if they were to hype that up to a Last of Us level, the real crown jewel of their world is mindless fun and honestly technical achievement so if they are not pushing those boundaries there is nothing that can show me narratively that i make me excited i am not interested in what they show as in characters i am interested in what they show as in world building these are going to be targeting the ps5 and xbox series x there's obviously been years of development in that these are probably the games that are going to push this system the most it ever been pushed. I want to see what that looks like. <laughs> that is all. I don't even think I'm going to buy it. But if I do, I for sure ain't telling y'all. Because the excitement level is here. It's, it's through the roof. <laughs> You excited to fly any helicopters that control? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. If especially if it give me a little ejector, uh, or are they gonna make uh, 
driving a car super cumbersome. Like you gotta change your oil before you gotta <laughs> drive the car and you hey, you 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 buy, making buy jokes, drink, but car. literally that is what they've been moving to. Like you making yeah, jokes. I don't like that. But they are literally moving to realism in the game. Yeah. Yeah. That is what they're the game. <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm saying. So, what you're saying is, is that they have to. I'm not saying that that's not fun. I'm saying that that there's there is a understanding of when a new Rockstar game comes out that they're going to innovate in a certain way, and I, whether you like the innovation or not, you know that that is something that they're going to try to achieve. They really went for realism in Res- Red Dead Redemption Two. If they're going to continue that trend of trying to go to the realism, what does that look like for a large city sim? And I guess I can't be excited for that because then I am. <laughs> I want to be learning how to pump gas in a, in a regular world when I'm pumping gas in the real, real world. So I'm like, am I playing the game or is the game playing me? So I guess I can't be excited for anything uh, outside you of, know. you know, I mean, I know there's plenty of times where I, we got a, a simple please be excited. At least y'all talked about it. <laughs> uh, you know how they be saying that sometimes. Please be like, excited. If you pump gas in a car or something like that, sometimes you can get air in there and stuff like that. <laughs> they gonna they gonna have a button mashing game every time you pump gas in your car to maximize how much gas you get and get your uh, gas mileage up, bro. <laughs> or say a bunch of times to minimize how much air you get in your gas tank. Yeah. I guess so. Got uh, big utilities in the game, but I'm not gonna uh, sit here and let y'all uh, muddy the waters for them. I think that they are a great, they, they they're a great developer, they're a great publisher. They they may have some problems with crunch, um, but when it comes to uh, pushing the genres forward, I think a lot of people. Are derive or take stuff from this company that you guys could care less about so i still appreciate them and uh i'm I'm looking forward to what they got next and i'll leave it at that um but the steam deck oled will we i know i'm getting one i think we talked about it a little bit but um this is how you do a this is how you do a refresh <laughs> for the PlayStation out there if you don't know this is how you do a refresh you actually innovate and you provide more value you don't take away and not innovate um so for me the Steam Deck OLED is probably the the um it is the definitive version of the steam deck version one basically v1 it has a better screen um it has the bigger battery better wi-fi for better downloads and streaming it has a dedicated bluetooth so that you don't have interruptions like you previously had um and it also kind of did some minor changes to the uh, nanometer die. So I went from seven nanometers to six nanometers. Basically, it's just more efficient, and um, which also helps with the battery. But it also gives it a tiny bump in performance, but again, helps with the battery the most. The biggest two parts of where I was upset about was literally the, the, the screen and the battery. They are talking 20 to 50% more battery depending on the game you're playing. And they're talking about an HDR OLED screen on the go. I could not be more happy. (laughs) Honestly, I hate that I have to pay for another one. Um, But outside of just just thinking about that in itself. It kind of helps me believe that. Like how I'm justifying this in my mind is even if the 
this iteration of the Steam Deck becomes obsolete in three to four years, I can still stream to this device and have a good experience because it's an OLED and it has a better battery. And when I don't run games natively on this, the battery is even better. And it has an OLED. <laughs> so I just justify it in my mind that even if I don't buy the next one right off bat, I can literally still use this one because it has an OLED. The screen is great. It may be stuck at 800p, but on this level of clarity with an OLED screen, you really can't beat it. And it runs games natively. So I'm going to leave it at that. I wanted to praise it and give it some ideas and thoughts. But now we can get a little critical. Um, what are y'all thoughts on this coming out so fast? <laughs> like, obviously, we just got the other one last year. What? Uh, uh, April? I'm going to say. Yeah, eight, last year, April. Do y'all think this is fast? Do y'all think it's too soon? Do y'all think? What are you thinking? Yeah, they jigged on us. You think they jigged on us? Like, poorly? Or well, in, a, in what way? They, they jigged on us, bro. They, they could have... Nah. I feel like that mug came out. Let me see. This is about, what, a year and a half later? I think it came out in April of 2022. That's when I think it came out. And they announced it. So about a year. And I mean, I guess it ain't... The, I guess the upgrades that they provided ain't too drastic. I just think it's... I just feel like it's a little bit sooner. Um, I'm trying to think the PS5 came out uh, with the end of, what, 2020, I think it was. Um, mm -hmm. And then they came out with a slim, what, three years later. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think it's a little bit soon for them to be doing that. Not to say that, not soon as far as, like, from a technological standpoint. It's just the gap at which they released the Steam Deck and then came out with this one. And then on top of that, they were still releasing Steam Decks, like, not even a year ago, I guess. Was was they still doing the drop things like a year ago, or you can just go pick one up now? No, they're still doing. As of now, you can still you can go pick one up. Um, it wasn't okay. another drop or anything like that. So, okay, I remember mine was like a drop or whatever, and I got mine in September. So for them to announce something about a year after I had got mine, you know, I'm a little salty. I mean, it's cool though because I mean, an upgrade that they provide in is worth the money and it's coming from somebody who like to save money and stuff like that and don't want to spend stuff you know i spent 400 400 smacker rules on the steam deck you know what i'm saying i ain't look back but they come out with the next one the little oled version and then it got eight times the amount of space i'm like y'all drop this like a, a year later after i get my steam deck in september 22 and y'all want 549 i'd have gladly spent 150 what what i spent for yeah 150 more for those upgrades and stuff like that, you know, but I'm like, it's cool. I just saying, I just like, that's how y'all coming, but you know, it's cool. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> that's how y'all coming. Yeah. What's your take, Josh? Um, I mean, the main thing is that they gave the impression that um, this was the, the first version was the best that they could do. And it'll be a long time before they can like, do the Steam Deck 2 or any any changes. Mm -hmm. um, somehow when through the last year they were able to like get the OLED going or something like that. But personally I don't mind. I really wanted a Steam Deck with a better screen and uh, I, I didn't really care about the storage as much but the better screen it, it is worth it. Personally I'm not I'm going to wait mm -hmm. um, just because like I feel like if I had known sooner I've been more excited, but like now, um, I'm okay with what I have. I don't, I don't play it all the time, and yeah. I have other streaming devices with better screens. But I would say this is a really good value. Um, this is the best probably device to buy. The Steam Deck was already the best handheld, but there are other ones that were more expensive, like the ROG Ally and stuff that had more power and better screen. But now you get the better screen, and the power is pretty, pretty decent. So it, it's definitely like gonna solidify itself as like the best handheld. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm just personally gonna wait, um, cause I have two, so <laughs> I don't need three. Yeah, no, it really does suck when you like kind of um, 
it, it, it really does suck when you basically have like multiple of these and like you what I'm what I'm kind of going to do with mine is I'm going to repurpose it. I'm going to give it to my um, nephew. Uh, hopefully give it to my nephew if I get the um, other one and um, be able to just provide him with something for, uh, I don't know, birthday, maybe not Christmas because uh, I already got them some other stuff. But, um, you know, just repurposing it and like um, making myself feel better. Like, OK, because I got something new, I can give somebody else something new and they maybe they can find enjoyment. Like I found enjoyment from this device and, um, you know, be able to play things on the go, whatever, whatever the case may be. But, um, but yeah, it does suck because you really feel like, well, I could have got, to, <laughs> I didn't have to buy this one if I would have waited early adopter, um, curse. Um, but I enjoyed my time with the steam deck and I bought the very entry level one. So the 64 gig had, 64 gigs has been kicking my butt since I bought it and I am so ready for it to not be doing that when I buy this new one I always could have upgraded my storage but I always felt like I'll just wait till the next one come out and I always kept saying that I wait till the next one come out I wait till the next one come out and now that this one's coming out it's not necessarily a better power jump or or you know more more uh, power or more uh, graphics power I mean it's literally just a lot of iterations that make me feel comfortable spending the money. So I'm excited for it. Um, I can't wait till the 16th. I'm going to, you know, spend my monies and uh, get it. But I do get waiting as well. If honestly, if I didn't use it as much as I'd use it, I probably would wait. But I stream a lot to it with my PC. And um, between this and just being able to play games, that natively on it um especially games that i'm just like playing in the time like uh like when, when i play you know jedi survivor or something like that i can literally stream that and i recently just bought some bluetooth headphones that had some throwaways that uh two pair actually that i'm going to be talking about here on the channel at some point but so i can just kind of blow some bluetooth headphones in if the kids break a pair i got a second pair to be <laughs> ready to go <laughs> i gotta think about that that's why i'm buying tubes now um so that way i can just continue to kind of you know be able to game and just you know have those in and uh feel like i'm getting a good experience especially now with an oled screen so i'm excited i think it's going to really help uh when it comes to just uh playability and my feelings behind you know, I love my, you know, I love me some OLEDs. I'm sitting here looking at an OLED right now. I got an OLED to the left. <laughs> got an OLED downstairs. Got an OLED in the living room. In the kitchen, in the, in the, in the bedroom. Too, too many OLEDs. They older ones, so don't come for me. They're old ones. They're 2017, 2018. But I, 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 that is, that is top tier level, uh, gaming in my eyes. If you don't, if you haven't experienced OLED, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. It probably doesn't matter. But if you have, trust me, it is it is like peak. It is the top tier of the top tier when it comes to gaming and screens. So, yeah, I'm excited, as you can tell. Uh, but that's all I needed. I need the HDR. I need an OLED. And they gave it to me. So, um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be, like I said, I'm be, I'm gonna check it out, be reviewing it and stuff like that. But yeah, definitely excited for it. Um, I think we're gonna cut it here because we're a little far over, and um, I know Josh needs to lay down. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just cut it short. And appreciate you guys listening. I I we're gonna talk about Marvel and the state of Marvel next time because um, that was supposed to be our last topic. So. Um, I do want to kind of talk about that. And I want to give it the time it needs to kind of talk through it. So we're going to talk about that at the top of the next episode. But I want to thank you guys for listening. As always, I appreciate you, especially if you got to this part. But this was a long winded one. Um, thank you for listening. As always, uh, Jalen, Josh, anything you want to tell the people before we get up out of here? Um. <laughs> No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> good, good. What about you, Jalen? Anything? I think with the quietness, I think we are set. Nah, but I, again, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I appreciate you guys listening. 
and we will talk to you all in the next one. Peace.